As you know, we are uh, Blanca García Riaz and Ana Iglesias Rodríguez. We work at the School of Education and Tourism in Avila, which is the periphery campus of the University of Salamanca. And um, we're going to present you here a survey that we've done among our students of the degrees of teacher training, primary and pre-primary teacher training uh, degrees among the use of oral devices for the practice of oral skills in English. Well, um, it is basic to start, and many of you have already uh, emphasized this, that uh, mobile devices and mobile phones or uh, mobile gadgets have taken an increasingly prominent uh, role in society in recent years. As Kristen was presenting before, you've seen how the um, people having mobile devices and the number of mobile devices uh, available and working in the world is increasingly growing in the last uh, decades. Um, besides the obvious and playful communicative function of these resources, we have to take into account that we have to take advantage of the educational achievement that we can get from them. Um, they are undoubtedly, as I was saying before, communicative devices, but as we can learn from them, why not using them to learn? It is something we have on our hand, it is something our students have, it's not an additional requirement that we ask to buy or to get, uh, it's something they use, they have, why not, making them realise that what they have in their hands is something much more powerful than they think and that they can learn and use that mobile devices to learn. Uh, smartphones, tablets or notebooks have, have become everyday items, as I was saying, uh, with which the user not only um, communicates and plays and access information, but also are, um, how to say, resource to fill in free time. When you're waiting to access the dentist or when you're waiting for the bus to come, your resource is to take your mobile from, phone from your pocket and just have a look or check the news in a newspaper or maybe play with a game to practice your skills in a language. So we have or we want to make profit of that um, use we make of mobile devices when we have free time, when we don't know what to do and we are waiting for something. Those daily time slots, either on the way home, between classes or etc., can be exploited therefore as practice, practice times as times outside the classroom to reinforce the competences or the knowledge you acquire inside the classroom. So that becomes a lifelong learning process. Not only I learn within the classroom as a space, as a physical space, but I learn what I or what my teacher gives me in the classroom inside and outside the university. So my whole life has a meaningful sense of learning as a whole. I learn by myself and I learn in or at the university in the classroom. Um, that is enabled mainly by, with, by something that you've all uh, strengthened by now, that is the ubiquity of apps. They can learn at home, they can practice at home. The presentation before, they don't know if they practice or they play the game maybe in the cafeteria at the university, maybe in a bar, maybe in a train, in a bus, maybe at home, you don't know what is surrounding them, if they have noise, if they're watching the, the television while they're playing, if they're in a quiet environment. There are many factors that can uh, affect that learning process and that is a result of the ubiquity <coughs> of any place, any time, without constraint, learning without constraints. Um, the integration of mobile devices in the learning process makes it possible that physical and virtual environments do not um, change each other or not any of them has to um, disappear, but they complement each other. This is the philosophy that the virtual can complement the physical um, time in the classroom or the physical lectures that we give our students. More and more, we are now um, witnessing the introduction of internet or e-learning based courses, MOOCs, or these type of uh, online courses, which will be entirely based on the virtual environment rather than the physical environment. They can 
even not have any physical contact with the teacher throughout all the um, course or all the subject they're teaching. So this virtual environment should boost content acquisition and become an attractive informal learning alternative. I think it is uh, obvious that the motivation and the engagement of students when using this virtual environment rises a lot. It happens in physics, it happens in languages, they get engaged because it's something they like, because it's something they know, and because it's something they know how to handle even better than we do. So it's something that they feel confident with because they manage it to a great extent. Uh, mobile technologies, as Barthana said in 2011, favour the interactivity between learners and knowledge objects are relatively flexible, I would say absolutely flexible in some senses, to access and use in times of, or in terms of times and place, can adapt to the rhythms of study and individual process, and that is important from the Bologna process all universities suffered, we were encouraged to focus more on the individual learning process of each student. These tools, the, these devices are much more adaptable that, than we as humans can adapt a lecture. And that is something we have to assume, it is a fact. We, uh, these um, devices or these apps or these uh, softwares can adapt their level, the rhythm, the process to the individual much more than we can do when we have 100 students in a classroom or 80 or 50. Never mind, we cannot adapt to individual rhythms or individual necessities when we have so many students. Um, they also present an enormous uh, amount and variety of resources that can be accessed no matter if it's audio resource, audio and video, written resource, okay? So that tools enable the implementation of different communication <coughs> skills when dealing with language that is important for us because Many of our students lack communicative skills, and that is something that we have to assume. Many of our students are good or average in grammar, average in reading and writing, but they cannot listen and they cannot communicate, they cannot speak. So when dealing with a language, they, so to say, have half of the skills available, and the other half of them cause them trouble, not to say are completely blocked. Okay, listening is sometimes okay, but speaking is another thing. So, um, what we aim with this uh, presentation and with the project I'm going to talk to you about is to encourage them to speak and to listen and to provide them more opportunities to practice that outside the classroom. So, we combine mobile learning and language learning in this presentation, the use of mobile devices in teaching and learning practices and uh, learning a language through the use of these mobile tools, which is gaining, as we have also seen in another presentation, a special boom. All these um, project or this research comes from a, a project that we are carrying out between three uh, universities in Spain, the UNED, UNED University in Madrid, the Complutense University in Madrid and the University of Salamanca. We have created a group of both uh, linguists of different uh, areas, German and English, and of course computer scientists. I think and I agree with your idea that we have to get benefit from each other and we as linguists know what we want to do, but we don't know how to do it and they don't know what to do or sometimes they don't have the focus so clear and we give them the focus and we, they provide us with the software. Okay, so there is the scaffolding behind the action that we need to be provided with by, um, by them. So this is the project, so call me social ontology driven cognitive augmented language learning mobile environment, something very um, long and not so clear, but it is indeed a project that research or that focuses its research on the uh, application and design of mobile apps to enhance um, mobile learning within the field of languages. Um, we have focused more specifically on these mobile devices to promote oral skills. We have to focus because we have to narrow our field of uh, study because it would be too wide to study at all. 
So one of the resources that we designed, as our colleagues from the University of Cardiff did, is uh, Audio News Trainers, an app designed by the computer scientists at UNED University in Madrid. So they listen, or students have to listen to podcasts, which are downloaded automatically by the app from a, a source of news from the Guardian newspaper and BBC a World a Channel of News in English. So they access and they listen to the podcast and afterwards they have to assess on the one hand if the level was right, if the understanding possibilities were more or less at their level, if they have understood nothing, most of it or all of it, so as to adjust the program to the needs of the students. And afterwards, they have to answer questions on the degree of understanding of the podcast. So it is a, so today, so to say, a learning uh, activity that could be in the classroom, but using updated information because because there are podcasts which are downloaded, so news that happened today and which are in the newspapers and televisions today, and also because they answer questions on them which are periodically changed, so they can uh, do the activity uh, as many times as they want. Um, they have green, yellow and red levels as the, fire, as the lights, traffic lights, so that indicates the lower mid, uh, intermediate and advanced levels. Okay, so we have tested um, this app and students have used it and they have showed, as it happened with our colleagues, a high degree of satisfaction. Our next step is also to include the use of this app into the grades, into the usage of the, um, into the contents of the subjects because they have so far voluntarily used the app. Yeah. So, so far we have asked them much more than we thought they could give us. So this is the step we're taking now. So the departure point of this research is that the leading role that information and communication technologies have uh, achieved has to be mixed up, obviously, with devices to assist the, le to assist the learning process. And they should be used as elements to enhance the ubiquitous on the one hand and lifelong learning processes on the other hand. So in this presentation today, we are just going to give you the results of a survey among students to know their habits regarding the use of mobile phones and their expectations towards the pedagogical use of these gadgets. We want to know if they actually believe in the pedagogical uh, use, because if they don't believe in the possibility of the app, of this project, in making them uh, be better at uh, communicative skills, we have nothing to do. Because if you don't believe in something, it is difficult that you get engaged to a um, greater degree in it. So um, we want to contribute to the autonomous learning, of course, that is something that um, it has been emphasized before, to know the opinion of students on the use of these mobile apps, to, this, to be, be able to develop and design better apps based on the information that we get from students. Apps developed by this research group will be done for students. So what better than knowing what they need to be able to give them what they need and what they like. So that is uh, our objective as well. Uh, to increase motivation, which is something we uh, get and we achieve by the only thing of using mobile apps and also provide students with the awareness on the one hand that mobile apps can help them to provide them with the awareness of what they can understand or what they can so provide a sense of level awareness for them and also a critical perception of the apps they are used to using apps all the time but do they think how good the apps are built how well the apps are helping their process, so be critical with the apps at the same time. So we planned the steps in a first uh, stage of the methodology. We implemented the different activities and finally we measured obtaining uh, data 
to present here. The material resources, so all the theoretical parts, so to say, of the app was done through the Moodle uh, platform of the University of Salamanca Studium, so they had the information about what they were going to do, what is I'm learning, what is for, what or in which in what sense or in which degree they can benefit from using an app. So it was a kind of a training course online for them to access the information, to have a background knowledge before starting the uh, process. We uh, also use Google Drive Utilities to design and analyze the questionnaires and the data analysis and the students volunteered from different subjects from the degree in primary education teaching English studies and tourism both at UNED in Madrid and uh, the University of Salamanca. This is a, a sample of the questionnaire we designed in, uh, Google, in a Google form so they could access the questionnaire easily whenever they wanted, wherever they wanted from any device available. Okay, to the data structure, we have carried out both uh, quantitative and qualitative analysis of the uh, figures that have came out of this study and try to extract relevant data from each item. The first item, as you can see on the screen, is when did the students respond to the uh, survey? And as you can see, the majority of them started responding at the beginning of the period, so that means that the first access to the um, app or the first access to the survey was motivated by the fact that we started the project and we asked them to collaborate in class. Whenever the uh, pushing force of the teacher finishes, it decreases, as you can see. So. We have to remind them, please collaborate, please access it. And whenever you remind of it, you can see in the graph that it becomes or the grades on the sharp edge, so that it is um, proportionally uh, corresponded to the force that the teacher uh, makes in the classroom. Okay, these are the subjects in which they are involved, so we control. Uh, the number of students we have from each subject and uh, therefore their backgrounds. If they're men or women, so we ask about the genre as well. If they access or which device they access from, the results uh, match those presented by our colleague before. The great majority of them, as you can see, access from a smartphone with Android uh, operating system. So that makes us, or that gives us the clue as to design um, the apps first on this uh, Android, on this Android-based uh, system, and afterwards maybe try to implement them for iPhone or iPads. But this is the majoritarian uh, uh, system they use. Um, regarding the time they uh, devote daily to the use of mobile devices, they say or they declare to use between one and three hours per day to use mobile devices, not to make phone calls or to write WhatsApp messages. So between one and three hours they are using the mobile phone not for communicative purposes at all. So for any other purposes, mainly accessing information or social networks or anything else. Okay. Um, regarding the place they use the mobile phones in a more uh, frequent time, they declare that they use them at home. So they use their free time at home to use a mobile device, which is curious as well, because they are within their, their own home environment, but they use a mobile device which connects them with the exterior world, so to say, and afterwards in, a, in means of transport. Okay? In the, um, at the university and others. They also said that they use the mobile devices mainly for web navigation. Okay, so they look for information in the web, they navigate the web, and the second um, 
mostly used um, thing was to check the mail. So they use the electronic devices between one and three hours to access the web and to check the mail. That is a correlation that we can do in that sense. Um, regarding their uh, faith in using mobile apps for learning purposes, you can see that uh, 59% says, yes, I believe I could learn a foreign language using a mobile device, but 41% said, no, I don't believe I can learn um, English or any other language using a mobile device. Okay. About the expectations of this, um, uh, 35 uh, percent uh, of them said that their expectations towards using mobile apps to learn English specifically were medium high or high. So they are not sure they could learn English, but they expect, so they have the faith that there could be an app with which they could learn um, English in that sense or uh, skills in a foreign language. Regarding which type of skill they would like to practice more, well, it's obvious that they are conscious of their lack of uh, control in uh, oral <coughs> skills, so they ask to practice listening on the first place and speaking on the second place. It is surprising that besides or in spite of their constant, um, well, I, I don't know how to say it, but they complained they complain all the time, that is the word. They, in spite of their con constant complaint about grammar being the pervasive activity in language um, courses or language subjects, is the third skill they ask for. They ask for listening, they ask for speaking, and they don't ask for reading or writing activities, they ask for grammar again. So that is something we have to look beyond as well. So, the conclusions that we can take from this uh, data, from the first datum, that is devices from which our students mostly, mostly use application are phones with Android operating system, followed by tablets from Apple. The conclusion is obvious. When we design applications, the first operating system we, we have to plan and we have to think of is obviously Android, for the moment being. Um, the second datum was these devices are generally used between one and three hours, although there are, or there is a remarkable, there's some mistakes, sorry, there is a remarkable group of students who manifest to use, the, to use them less than an hour a day. So we are moving from one to three hours of use, so we believe it would be convenient to create application involving a limited use of time, as our colleague presented before, never beyond the total use of mobile devices, because if they have three or up to three hours available, they will not cut out social networks or information access to play our app. They will play our app, add it to the time they use the um, gadget, the device, for other purposes. So we have to try to include the use of our app within that time slot, not to make them um, create or make an effort, an extra time effort to use the app. So we want to incorporate the use of the app in that uh, time they use. Um, a large proportion of students use mobile devices at home and or in means of transport, that means Obviously, that the um, learning place is not is no longer uh, restricted to the classroom. So the informal learning is already taking place within or without the supervision of the teacher, which allows or which allows greater flexibility in the classroom. Um, regarding the 60% of students who said to have already used mobile applications for educational purposes, we um, can therefore um, know or deduce that they already without the um, exigence, we could say, of a subject or the inclusion of the use of an app within a subject, 
have used mobile apps because they've seen an advertisement on TV because somebody has told them there was an app. So they have taken their own initiative to use apps for learning English and that is important for us as well. Uh, most of the students also declare they would like to use mobile application to practice listening activities or reception, followed by students who were attracted to the idea of conducting activities of uh, speaking. That is something we could uh, advance beforehand. It is representative for the project because it, it orientates our uh, goals and our aims are also the um, needs that the students uh, have and confirm the preference of students towards what they know how to do in a worse, so to say, or in a lower degree. So they're conscious of their own deficiencies and they ask to reinforce what they are not so good at. And there is something honest about the students and that is something we have to make profit of. Okay? And, um, well, this is an ongoing project and we are developing more apps. We have divided the whole uh, group of researchers working in Salamanca and Madrid and we are designing on the one hand listening and on the other hand uh, speaking apps so we can, uh, during this academic year and the next one, test the uh, apps with the students and see if they work, how they work, what the students like best and what less if they actually think they could incorporate it to their autonomous learning and so on and so forth. So this is one tiny piece of our project that we would like to present you today, but it is something that we are still developing.